Hi everyone, so this video is going to be on fish that were discarded in 2019 and I should probably have made this video in January as it's kind of like a summary but I wasn't filling up to it Just a disclaimer, this is not all the species that were described This is sort of the ones that were interesting to me and the ones that were sort of highlighted to me So I won't be talking about like every single one and that'll be way too long even within Lowell Cardo so this is catfishes, um, only because there's one uh, Click the Day Corydoras in there. So I'm going to start off with that Corydoras mainly because it was described quite early in the year, or I felt so. So this is Corydoras Granti, described by um, Tenka, Lima and Brito, which is the surnames of the people um, who described it, and that's usually what I'd put in the citation. So Corydoras granti looks very similar to Corydoras arcturius and in fact they were thought to be the same species possibly by quite a few people but they, while they both have that skunk marking um, the Corydoras um, arcturius is a lot more distinct it, I think its markings are a lot more solid it's really difficult to explain and I'm not great on Corydoras but it's quite interesting. So Corydoras granti was actually named after someone in the UK um, catfish community um, who had described previous Corydoras in the past but also noticed the actual difference between the two and sort of started the ball rolling if you get what I mean. Okay so the next one is probably one that really I was really into and that is the Baron Sister. So there are two described last year that I know of and not many Baron Sister seem to get described. It is a smaller genus. Um, I'd say sort of around 10, 15 individuals. It's not massive. They generally look very similar. Most don't hit the trade. Most aren't that popular anyway. They did. So you'll probably know the genus by Baron Sisters and then there's the Golden Nugget. There's also the Mango Magnum Pleco, which is Baron Sisters Chrysanemus. Described, they were described in the same paper um, almost recently. And then there's Baron Sisters Begin, I described also recently in the last like decade or so. And also Baron Sisters Dematoides, which gets confused with High um, Hemian Sisters Subiverdis. Um, and they're the main ones I can think of that were described sort of quite recently, but they're all sort of reasonably easy to find in the trade, like you can locate them. So these two I've never seen before, apart from in the paper, they do have L numbers. I won't list the L numbers because I don't use that system and they've been described, so who needs it? So this is Baron Sisters Hadroso Hadrosomus and you can see it what well, what interests me is that slight banding that it has on the um, uh, caudal and the dorsal fin, so that's the tail fin and the top fin. And this suggests to me that at one point it did have proper banding, and you see that in Baronsistrus, uh, Xanthellus and Chrysomus to an extent, and the banding can almost totally go or it will always reduce, but it will not be as distinct. This fish does look smaller though, so it's like it's almost losing that banding a lot earlier and you see that in quite a few different genera. The next one I think would be popular in the trade, unlike the other one, um, it's just a lot more striking. So this is a Baronsitius micropunctatus and that this fish is, you can see, a lot more spotted, it's quite pretty, there's quite a few other Baronsitius which I would have said are very similar. I'd say also quite similar to the Baron Sister Sandellus L081 but lacks banding. It's a lot more white so maybe more similar to Baron Sister Nibiatus. I can't pronounce it and I've never seen it in person but um, all ones that get confused with the Hypen Sisters 201 the, um, often called snowflakes. So then the next, this is, next one is a Laurel Carne and I don't, I'm not a big fan of Laurel Carne. Um, they're okay, they're cool, but they're not my type of thing. So this is Pseudohemiodon, oh my god, Unilano, 
<laughs> it's a typical one to say. Um, so this fish looks a lot like the um, Pseudohemiodon sp peru 1 I think it is. Another undescribed species, I don't think they're possibly the same. It's not as striking as Pseudohem sorry, Pseudohemiodon apithanos. And I'll say there's probably a reason why. Um, that they're just not even... It's a bit grey, so I can't see there being any demand. Um, because the apithanos and the AF apithanos are a lot more um, striking fish very distinctive marking and this fish kind of isn't it's quite typical sort of what you'd say of a catfish grey and brown so the next one then my favourite one which has to be of course an ancestrous so this species I almost forgot about it to be honest because there's so many ancestrous I love and they keep coming out and I'm like oh I'll never find them because you can't find half of them I've got a list of ones I want but I'll never see because they're stunning but there's no demand. Like, I, they say like money correlates to rarity and it really doesn't because in all honesty you could get a hype and sisters for anywhere from 60 to 120 pounds but you can get an ancestress that no one else has. You could get it for like 30 pounds. Um, so it's a bit like uh yeah it's it's just not they don't really hit the trade there's no demand and i don't think the fishermen have much idea of a demand the only one that has a real demand is l255 oh which possibly could be described in the future um other than the common species but so this fish as you can see is absolutely stunning it's like tiger markings this is a preserved specimen um or specimens and they are very variable. So as a preserved specimens from what you can expect they will reduce, their colours will lack, they will reduce, they tend to kind of bleach more so um, and they do get a lot of damage they are just generally they're used more for taxonomy which uses more morphological features rather than the colours so much but it, it is absolutely stunning it is a good size it says here that I think the maximum uh, size is about 6 millimeter, 6 centimeter. so so that is a really manageable fish the only thing that I think really lacks is their tentacles aren't that impressive they are a wider fish and Historic specimens don't do things justice when it comes to beauty. So I'd have to see. Um, if they do come into trade, do I am able to go up to them maybe one day? But absolutely gorgeous fish, and I'd love to see them one day. And uh, any ancestors I like to see, they are harder to keep most of them apart from the common ones. And they're just a, different. You, they probably won't come out either much. Anyway, thank you for watching, um, if you like my videos then thank you, um, and yes, yeah, so, let's see.